There was Roy Keane and there was myself. <laughs> Careful, I may not gonna allowed my allowed to go to Ireland anymore. No, no, you can, you can, you can. It's cool. <laughs> What's going on, Copper fam? It's myself and Vuj, and we are here to interview the Arsenal legend himself in New York, Mr. Patrick Vieira. Well, obviously, I look like I'm dressed for New York Fashion Week, despite the fact that we are at a football training ground facility. <laughs> I'm wearing a t-shirt with obviously one of the best players to ever grace the Premier League, which is Ian Wright, one of my heroes. Which means I'm obviously an Arsenal fan. Big Arsenal fan. Tattoo on the arm and Thierry Henry celebrating against Spurs after we beat him uh, at Highbury. Good old days, I remember. That's a weird fan, yeah. As we all know, it's been crazy over in England with everything <sighs> that's been happening. Um, Team Musker 17 says, what do you think of Arsenal right now, as it is? Nauru is going to be a big Arsenal fan. The nine years that I spent there was best nine years in my career, in my football career. And I'm like the fans, of course, you're watching the games, you feel a little bit disappointed because you're seeing talent there mm. and not Good managing to, to win the games and the way they concede goals. So it's quite frustrated for the fans, yes. Ooh. But at the same time, um, I look at them play and I still enjoyed watching Arsenal because they play some really good football. Yeah. So, of course, they are missing something, but I enjoyed watching Arsenal play football. Point to the spot. He's asked, should it be Wenger in or out? Now, obviously, it's difficult for you because it's It is a difficult one, one, of course. And, and, and it's not just about, about Arsenal, it's about coaching in general, because now I'm into in the other exactly. side. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I do understand a little bit more how difficult it is. And as a coach, you're controlling the players you bring, you're controlling what's going on in the field, the, the decision you're making. But I think when players are on the field, they have to take responsibility. I you understand I what yes. I mean? So I it's really yes. difficult to say, no, it's a Wenger in or Wenger out because I don't have all the information to make that decision and it's not going to be fair for me to make a decision. But it's important for players on the field to take responsibility because losing yeah. games, yeah, manager is the first one, but at the same time, players have to look at themselves and say if they give everything for the football club. And I don't think at Arsenal, every single player can say that they've been giving everything for this football club, for the shirt that they're wearing. Mm. And then after we can talk about different aspects of the game, but the manager is always going to be the easy uh, target. Easy. Easy. target. Easy. One man, 12 and 11. Easy, easy, easy target. Mm. But you have to look at what Arsenal did for the football club in the last 20, 21 years, what the club was before and what the club is now. The, the club completely changed. Yeah, 100%. It's more than a club now. Mm. We're more than a club. Oh, no, you know, philosophically, not. looking at this, we could go and carry on speaking. I think. It's, yeah, it's, but you can talk about one, Arsenal yeah. all the time because yeah. when you look at Arsenal, they have an identity, the they way do. they play, the play philosophy. Yeah. It's been like that for the last 20 years, and then of course you mm. want to win as a fan. Mm. But look at the identity and the philosophy that Arsenal bring to this football club, and this is sometimes more important and bigger than just winning a trophies. From Declan. He wants to know your favourite moment against the one and the only Mr. Breaking. The thing is that there was Roy Keane and there was myself. <laughs> no, there was Roy Keane and there was yourself. <laughs> You've always been seen the back of my shirt. So that's why in his Hi, mind, on his mind right. he always has a number four shirt in his, back, in his, in his mind. Um, no, ah, but uh, he's uh, sent for it too, bro. <laughs> I always love to play against this guy yeah. because he's. Uh, I think we're sharing a little bit uh, the same kind of uh, passion. You want to win passion for the games, yes. And uh, and I think he was uh, he was a fantastic leader, a captain for for United, and um, and every time that I play against him, he's uh, he was tough. I knew it was going to be difficult. He's a, he's a winner and um, and I was looking forward to play against him because you always you always want to play against the best. Yeah. And at yeah. uh, that he time he was uh, he was one of the best until I arrived. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on to Connor. Connor's asking about uh, the young boy from Monaco. Um, is he going to be better than Thierry Henry? No, I don't know. Nobody, <laughs> nobody knows. Yeah. Because we know what Thierry achieved in his career. Mm. And just to say that this boy would be better than Thierry, I will not going to put my house into it. I'm not going to put money into it because yeah. we don't know. Yeah, 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 because yeah. Thierry was like one of the best, if not the best, 
he was the best. He was the best. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's been unbelievable. So the level is really high. And we're talking about this boy Mbappe, he's got the potential, no doubt about it, but it's about how he will keep developing his potential and how he's going to be playing and uh, we don't know. Mm. But to, it looks good. It looks good. He looks There's no good. doubt about it. A couple more <laughs> questions. We've got one from Sam, it's a good question. What player that you never played with did you want to play with the most in your career? Mm. But one of the players that I really loved and uh, wanted to play with him was uh, Edgar Davids. Yes. Oh. I feel he was a style icon. He's it's like a, a cultural the glasses, icon. The glasses, the glasses, the glasses, yeah. And, and then yeah. Nike adverts, he was killing it, yeah. bro. He was, oh man. And on the field, we play against each other, France, Holland, and he was like a, yeah, a battle. He was like. I think it was around two. Euro, no, but I think it was just a friendly game. I think it was. Yeah. But I've been really lucky yeah, because I played next to Makelele, to oh. uh, Manuel Petit, <laughs> to uh, Gilberto at Arsenal, and I played with some some fantastic. But one that I never had a chance to play with um, and uh, was was Edgar David and. Uh, Loved it to play with him. What do you think of Kante? Because everybody's singing his praises. He does but his job. Kante, the man, no, but the man is not doing his job. He's doing more than his job. He passed yeah, to himself. Exactly. No, but he's, he passed to himself against West Ham. But that's why he's, he's, a, he's a type yeah. of players who work for the teams and for the other one. And mm. that's why the Chelsea, I was looking at the comment from, from the Chelsea players and even at Leicester, they love him. They love him mm. because the mm. guy is working for the team. Mm. He's putting his, the team before he's putting himself. Mm. He's doing all the dirty work for his teammates. And, uh, and that is uh, the quality that you don't find really often. Players who like to sacrifice themselves for the team, who like to do the dirty work because every other player gets praise. Uh, Hazard gets praise, Venezco, Costa, Pedro, but not much Kante. But the most important is that the players surround and his teammates recognize his work. And that is the most important thing for, for the teams to be really successful. And, and when you look at the comment from the Chelsea players regarding Kante, it's, it's fantastic. We're going to close it by asking you, Patrick Vieira, of all the people you've played with, give us your five-a-side team. It's, it's impossible. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's impossible. How do you want me to give you a, a five-a-side when I've been really lucky to play with Zidane, Thuram, um, Petit, uh, Gilberto, Edu, Burkamp, okay. Oleg Lugny, <laughs> Stefanov. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you understand what I mean? It's, yeah. it's a difficult I one. Understand. You know when we won the double at 98? Of course I did. And um, this team, the, that team was, was quite really, really special. And then, of course, you're talking about the invincible. Invincible to go through a season with no losing games. You need luck, yeah. but you need talent. You need belief. You need, and and we had that at the at that time at that year as well. So, even to give you a team, a squad that was special, it's really difficult. You're talking about the France '98 World Cup to win the World wow. Cup. You need. I've made a pass. You played to, Pat um, to Emmanuel Petit. No, but it's, it's, it's crazy. But look at the Juventus team. When I left Arsenal and I went to Juventus. That was one of the most strong team that I ever played for. Because you remember the World Cup in 2006 between Italy and, and France? Yes. And you had like 11 to 12 players in the starting 11 who was playing for Juve. Juventus. Yeah. So that was like a man team. And, uh, and that was a really special team as well. 1997, Christmas time, we were sixth. And winning the league was just not even in my thought process. But yet from December, to me, we ended up doing the double. What was said or what happened within that team? How do you right switch then? that? Right? How do you switch from being sick for Christmas? It's just a belief. It's a belief, and uh, and there's the like if you keep, you know, I think it, to win a title, you need a momentum, and how to find that momentum? And the momentum is coming by winning one game, two games, even if you suffer, if you don't play mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's important to keep believe that you can win games, and and I remember that year in '98. <laughs> We were winning games, not playing especially well. We was winning 1-0. Yeah, 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 I remember. Who was scoring? Overmart. And 98, you had Overmart, you had Burkamp, Jan Wright. Uh, at the time, you had Anelka was doing something. Oh, so, even I think in 98, we didn't play good football, like uh, in 2002 or even, even, even 2004, even now. 
I think we were quite really like a, a really hard team to beat. Yeah. Because look at the back four. <laughs> you can play against anybody. You can go to war with this back four. Yeah. You understand what I mean? So in '98 we didn't play really good football, but we were quite really solid as a as a team, as an individual, uh, physically, mentally, and we we loved to compete. That was part one of our interview with Patrick Vieira. The second part you can check out on the NYCFC channel on YouTube. Have a nice.